Like, have, have I the seen Sopranos? The Sopranos? Yeah. yeah. All right, and you like Andor better. What? This is why I don't text him at all. <laughs> I just ask him a fucking question. Do I like he... The Sopranos better than Andor? Yeah. Yeah, but... Nice. I love The Sopranos. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a good show. Brunch! Hit it, boys! <laughs> Okay, I'll bite. Uh, what's everyone all up in arms about with the uh, Charlotte Hornets jerseys? Oh. What's the big deal? Uh, it's hilarious that you couldn't find the humor in it. Mm. Uh, the new Charlotte Hornets uh, jersey mm-hmm. looks like the word clit. Okay, so that's what I thought it was. That's mm-hmm. what I thought it was. Are sports fans aware of how many athletes look like penises? <laughs> Uh, Brett Gardner famously just like tall bald dudes <laughs> like so well, they literally need it spelled out for them <laughs> they, they, they literally, literally do. need it spelled out for them <laughs> guess we're just a little more uh, highbrow than the that's rest right of some of you mm-hmm. uh Taylor Swift is in the news Taylor Swift is in the news do you know this uh TikTokers are texting their dating app matches entirely oh. in old Taylor Swift lyrics to weed out incompatible men like, so it's people who are big Taylor Swift fans and they're looking for Taylor Swift fans to date. Mm. Like, that's their number one priority. Please don't have sex with each other and don't you have Don't kids. procreate, <laughs> yes. Uh, wow, that's psychotic. Uh, if your number one requirement of dating is, like, you need to listen to Taylor Swift... It's not a shock that you're single. Uh, uh, Quote, you're on the phone with your girlfriend. She's upset is the opening message. 18-year-old Katerina sent a man she matched with on Tinder. So confused right now, he replied after she sent a series of cryptic messages referencing his presumably non-existent girlfriend before landing on what was going on. Katerina's messages are the lyrics of Taylor Swift's 2008 hit song you belong with me uh, fun fact uh taylor swift was a child when she made that song yeah so that, that's what you're using to weird try to find the uh katarina requested to withhold her name due to how embarrassing this is uh posted screenshots of their conversations on tiktok where it blew up oh, receiving God. over 5.4 million views we've talked about it a little before Ugh. i don't get uh what tiktok numbers mean no it's it's like famously my, my first tiktok got like a lot of views. Yeah. But I, then I was like, that's, but that's a low number. Like if this happened on Twitter or Instagram or something, I'm probably getting endorsement one, deals. I mean, but. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. I mean, one of, one of my TikToks has like 86,000 views and I have like 200 followers. Same. Yes. It doesn't same. make any sense. Yeah. Uh, previously, Instagram was the, uh, the, the most confusing um, follower count social media because like you go to anybody on Instagram that you don't know and they have like a hundred thousand followers and you're like, who the fuck are you? Uh, 10 days after her original video, Katarina posted a follow-up where <sighs> she tried the same thing with another match. She told insider it didn't lead to any dates, but quote, it's Shocking. definitely a good way to find out whether the people are actually nice. All right. Look, I am a big, what? I am a big, just fucking be nice to people guy, or at least I hope I am. And Starting off being intentionally weird with somebody to right. see if they'll be nice back is you not being nice. Exactly. You're making somebody uncomfortable. Exactly. And like, especially in like a dating forum where like there are people that are like, hey, I'm trying to find love. Yeah, I'm trying to find a partner. Space. Yeah. And it's like very, very personal. And you're like playing games with them and being weird. And like, according to that article, like being accusatory if that's the word about like a a non-existent girlfriend (laughs) like i want to know like what the definition that person's definition of like being nice is like is the guy acting confused being nice yeah yeah that that, like does the person have to play along for it to be nice what can he say if he doesn't get it too like what is he allowed to say yes like uh Oh, you know, he said, I'm not sure what's going on here. Right. That's pl- that's being nice. Which, if he was like, uh, 
not sure what's going on here, but I liked your profile because I saw you ice skating and I love ice skating exclamation point. Uh, what do you, I, I suppose, I don't know how kids are these days. They probably make fun of that guy. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Right. Yes. Like fucking loser. Down bad. <laughs> <laughs> Stop looking at my pictures, creep. <laughs> right. Um, I'm not going to fuck you. Ew. <laughs> so uh, only solution for sure is to podcaster is for podcasters to respond to these TikTokers mm -hmm. with Father John Misty lyrics, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. That'd be amazing. Uh, what is she? Let me, let me find. Uh, uh, you're on the phone with your girlfriend. She's upset. Well, I just love the kind of woman who can walk over a man. <laughs> And I mean, like a goddamn marching band. And then when they've revealed that it's, uh, that it's, they're like, no, I'm just using Taylor Swift lyrics. And then you say, oh, uh, betting Taylor Swift every uh, night inside the yeah, Oculus Rift. <laughs> Open conversations, betting Taylor Swift every night inside the Oculus Rift. Yes. What are some good Father John Misty opening? I mean, if you, if uh, pour if, me another drink and punch me in the face, that would be, that would be like, if that'd be like, me on a dating app would be like that i mean me that would be drink. my that wouldn't be my opening line that would be, be my bio. bio yes your bio yes i don't know enough about uh the which different things have different uh things i believe that every dating profile has a bio you have to have i do you have know, to have some sort of like here's me and i do know that people are considered less uh attractive might be the wrong word but like you're supposed to uh give care to your bio right it's, it's not a like, space for jokes well i mean it should be a place for jokes like yeah, if, if, like if, the, if you're funny you should be showcasing that in your bio yeah your bio should be highlighting the best parts of you or or the worst parts of you if you just want to put that on the table i you know what i swear at work we did a story on this that was a thing people were putting were intentionally posting unflattering pictures of themselves in their dating profiles in a sort of like, hey, they want you I'm not trying to trick you. Yeah, and when you, when you show up to the date, they want the uh, they want you to be like, holy smokes! So you're setting. A, I'm always a fan Beautiful. of setting a low bar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's all we do in anything we do. Don't overhype yourself. Yeah, don't like be be kind to yourself. Yeah. Be show yourself some self care, but like, don't think that you're a, a god walking amongst mortals uh patreon.com slash listen to brunch it's where you can find all of our, our bonus dating contact advice. uh bonus content uh dating advice you can ask us questions on there send us messages we send you nice notes we try to brighten up your day anything you want uh, also it helps us keep spike around spike uh is helping us with uh video on this episode we just had a great meeting with him he is the best uh speaking of overhyping um i texted you asking uh if you have watched On Cinema with Tim Heidecker. I can't overhype it enough. No Rush, have you seen it yet? I have not. You should check it out. It's a really good time. Uh, Taylor Swift is in the news, though, because Grammy nominations are out. And uh, shout out the Grammys. They did not take the bait with Red's the Red Taylor's version. Mm -hmm. Not up for album of the year. Great. Love that. She's trying to Lizzo the yeah. thing and trying to... I hate that, like... Uh, I don't hate it, like, but like I do feel like... The Taylor Swift cynicism is rubbing off on me, um, or at least That's like I'm I'm seeing it skepticism. more. Skepticism, like, skepticism, yeah. skepticism, yeah, skepticism, and just like not again, like the Grammys, not buying, not taking the bait. Yeah, like I. It also helps that the Taylor Swift album wasn't that good. If you, I mean, if you put out a second version of a and worse version, Red, Red Taylor's version is way worse than Red. If you put that out. When Red lost album of the year, yeah. it's like, nah, dude, you, you, you're no, you're. I also think that Midnight's is, is not that good of an album. I'm like, I've uh, come... we both had like immediate highs and then. Yeah, what, what it I definitely had immediate highs and it's like, it's, I wouldn't say it's crashed down to earth, but it's like. Mm. What I can't get, I can't get past how bad a lyricist she can be sometimes. I know that she always is. But like, I mean, I've listened. I've I, I've I done hate, what the Taylor, the Swifties have said. They they've said, okay, DJ, look, you're okay. Whatever stupid points you're making about the musicality, sure, mm -hmm. it's not super musical. It's not creative. Whatever. But she's a great. Lyricist. Listen to her lyrics. Lyrics and holy fuck, like the lyrics to Antihero are so bad. I think that 
uh, the sexy baby thing is a great that's lyric. So weird. I so that that's like the only part I like, and I like the line. I'll look directly at the sun, but never in the mirror. Mm-hmm. But everything else, like that, th- those are some really, really bad. Like I had a dream lyrics. my daughter in law killed me for the money. I mean, that's like that sounds like a father job mystery. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, no, and like Antihero is like one of the songs that I actually like off that album. But I, I like it too. And. I don't know. Like, it's just a bad, I guess it's a bad sign when, uh, I hate to pin them against each other constantly. Cause like, I don't want to do that, but they did release an album on the same day. Uh, Carly Rae Jepsen wrote circles around Taylor Swift on their new albums. I got some texts every now and then I'll get something that makes me think, which is hilarious because like the one thing that I've always said, like, don't pay attention to the Carly Rae Jepsen lyrics. They're so stupid. Oh, like, I mean, fucking, I was talking with a pal recently. Beach house has grown on me. I'll put on mm, beach house sometimes. And the first time I heard that song, <laughs> I wanted to jump out the window. I, wanted, I still do. It's still I, I wanted skip. to go to the beach and walk straight. <laughs> um, but uh, wh- one of my friends a few weeks ago was like, hey, hot take. So Taylor and Carly Rae put out albums the same day. I think and my wife thinks. The Carla Rae album's better. Miles better. And it's just a reminder that like social media isn't everything. I was like, if you are at all paying attention to me at all, which it's a weird thing that people on social media can expect everyone to be doing yeah. that. Uh, instead, this person just wants to be my friend. Uh, but I was like, that's even weird. Uh, do you not? F- like, you're telling me this <laughs> fucking course, man. Is there an echo in here? You fucking loser. Uh, I mean, it's, it's true. It's, it's significantly better. Um, and I just, I don't know, like it's so, it's just funny. Cause like the, I, I feel like the Taylor's biggest strength has been her song writing and her lyrics. And like on the flip side, Carly Rae is the exact opposite where it's been like, I'm just here to make fun jams. And like the lyrics don't really matter. They're, I, I make them intentionally stupid. And I think both things kind of just flipped on their heads. While Taylor was not nominated for album of the year. She is up for song of the year with the 10 minute all too well. And that's where I got to be a little bitch for a second. Sorry <laughs> to use the B word. Uh, I got to be a real pill on this because people say all the time, what's record of the year? What's song of the year? What are, they, what are all these things supposed to mean? I don't even know what are all these things. Record of the year is the production. The overall thing was this of high quality song of the year is a songwriting award. So this person did the most generic and overused, literally. There's a video I tweeted out about the 1564 chord progression. So I say this all the time. You don't know what it means. Here, watch this video. You'll understand. All Too Well is this super repetitive, boring thing for 10 minutes. That is bad songwriting. And she it's, it really upsets me. But uh, Taylor Swift is in the, the news because uh, the tickets for the Eras tour are on sale now people trying to get them on Ticketmaster, but uh more like errors tour because everyone's having a hard time so we're gonna do something that we don't do much on this show it's just the second time we've done in brunch history which is uh get someone on the horn using the phone call device on our uh, on our board so let's uh let's do it let's ring up a uh a friend who's it gonna be the mystery is killing me who could it be now? Not a Taylor Swift song. You're really doing this to me? Hello. Oh, it's Nora. No. We, Hello, Nora. Hi, That's DJ. Wait, hold on. Let me let me stop. My computer is playing Chocolate by the 1975. Ooh, don't stop that. Hello. Keep it going. I uh, haven't heard that song in a long time because, Nora, they didn't play it at their show. When they I were know. live in concert, they didn't play it, Nora Princiati of The Ringer. Yeah, tough scene. Great song. I, I heard there's an even tougher show, though. Oh, really good scene. Did you go in New York? I did go in New York. Was it not the best uh, stage design that you've ever seen at a concert? It was very cool. It was it, very, very cool. I didn't didn't quite answer my question, though. The answer to that question is no. The it's the best, best that I've seen. Is, yeah, no. You've been to Taylor Swift shows. Yeah, but I I mean, like, this, I've, the stage design of, like, being inside a house was the coolest that I've ever seen on, at a show. Pound for pound. It was very maybe. cool. So here's here's the thing, though. There's a different – there's there's different ways to analyze this, right? Like, there were certainly creative and interesting and, and theatrical things that they did that I think are, like, incredibly superlative. I had kind of crappy tickets. So it didn't – it wasn't great. 
Okay. For yeah. like they didn't do a good job of like playing to the rafters. That is in part my fault because when those tickets went on sale and I saw that they were playing in New York on a Monday night during football season, I was like, oh well, I'm gonna be a I should be a responsible NFL reporter and watch Monday night football. And then I heard the show was good and was like, well, screw that. It's um, a, and then the so Monday Night Football matchup was probably like dog shit versus dog shit. And you're like, okay, I'll go see the 1975. It was actually, it was actually, um, was it the game when the Ravens kind of like reestablished themselves being good? Anyway, what's up, boys? <laughs> you you must have gotten those tickets from Ticketmaster if the seas, if the t- tickets were bad because, Nora, everyone's so mad about Ticketmaster. I, I, I was asking Pete earlier. I said, what did Elon Musk buy Ticketmaster? Everybody's so mad at Ticketmaster. So tell us what's going on with the Taylor Swift fans trying to buy tickets to this show and using Ticketmaster, if, if we're correct. So the thing about capitalism is, <laughs> um, it's been bad. It's been extremely bad. So here's the short version. Yesterday, the verified fan presales happened. Today, the Capital One cardholder presale happened. So the only tickets that have been sold have been sold to people who were, through various ways, part of a presale group. General on sale is still in a few days, but obviously that's going to be an unmitigated disaster. Um, both presales were abject failures. Uh, there are a lot of things people are mad about from anything from how the verified fan process works, right? Because there are various sort of opaque ways that you could get priority, maybe from having had lover fest tickets, but then people who didn't have lover or who did have lover fest tickets didn't get off the wait list and blah, 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 blah. Uh, definitely some gripes there. Um, dynamic pricing is a thing that is happening on this tour Ugh. that doesn't make people happy. There are all sorts of different things that, you know, just the existence of Ticketmaster fees pisses people off. All of those things, I, I get why people are upset about them. I can make you a genuine pros and cons list that has things on both sides of the, the column for oh. all of those things, even dynamic pricing. I know we hate it. I don't like it either, but like, let's, let's be real about what this is. That said. Sounds, sounds like you're tech, saying it's, it's both sides and uh, we don't do that here so on this uh, podcast, on, Nora, on, so we're going to have to let on, you go. Hold on. Choose a I, side. No, no, hold on. What I'm trying to do here is be very clear about what the problem is. Okay. Ticketmaster doesn't run a functional website. <laughs> That's yes. a big problem. Yes. And I agree with that, that take. The tickets to this tour I know some people are going to be pissed off hearing me say this. They are very reasonably priced. That doesn't mean that they're not expensive, but they are priced. If you buy a face value ticket, and that includes everything I've seen, even the things that get hit by the dynamic pricing magic wand, I am very confident that you are buying that ticket for much, 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 much less money than someone would be willing to pay for it. And again, capitalism yeah it's a supply little and demand. Thorny. we don't have yeah. to we don't have to like everything about it so can i ask can i ask you this that, th- is, that is the okay go can, ahead. I, can yeah. I ask you this though like do you see a positive in the like the the nightmare that this whole process was because like for me I'm I envision Taylor Swift like sitting in her like gigantic cave, like rubbing her hands together, being like, yes, yes. It's it's a castle. She got the castle. She goes to him, but she she kept the castle Uh, like this is only driving up the demand for Taylor Swift tickets. It's putting her in the news. It's and like none of the fault falls back on her. It's all on Ticketmaster. I imagine her being very happy with the way that this is going. Famously, Taylor Swift, usually the victim. (laughs) True. I, I disagree with that. Why? I don't, I mean, first of all, she put, she kind of sounded like she was a little pissed off. Um, she well, she has to pretend like she Grammys, cares, but she, she has to pretend like but, she cares so about on, her fans. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, a lot of people disagree with me. A lot of people think the whole verified fan thing is, is a scam and it's, it's not transparent at all. And a lot of people don't like it. You are talking to someone who is far more defensive of that system than most people because when I have bought tickets through that system, I know I'm buying the tickets at face value. 
And when I, when I went through, um, I, I got waitlisted, but I had a friend who got a code for the first presale who's a doctor and couldn't spend three hours of her time on a Tuesday, like trying to get Taylor Swift tickets. And she was like, can you log in through my account and try to do this? So I'm trying to do it on her account. And I log in, I get to the front of the line. It took maybe 20 minutes or something. And there were glitches the entire way through. There's a glitch in the waiting room. There's a glitch in, there's a glitch every step of the process. Mm -hmm. I get in and I quickly select a group of four tickets at, um, in uh, Gillette Stadium. They are lower bowl tickets. And each one of those tickets is going to cost $270. It's That's a, fair a price. good deal. It's a fair price. That I is think. a good fucking deal. Hmm. Then, like, so from that point and up to that point is the point that Taylor Swift herself controls. I think I'm getting a pretty good deal as a fan. Then the Ticketmaster website glitches out, gets overwhelmed. At the point of sale, it kicks me out of the line. And you have to go back in. When I got back in, I re-entered the code. And they found out that they'd misprogrammed the codes so that if you refreshed the page and entered it twice, mm. it identified it as a mistake. Then they pause the whole system for about an hour while they work this out. And by the time you, I got back in, basically everything was gone. So if we're talking about Taylor's part in this, the conversation that I think is worth having is should someone of her stature put her foot down and say, and what we're talking about is saying, I will not even play in stadiums if I have to work with this company that has a monopoly. Okay. well, that... Because Live Nation and Ticketmaster control basically every NFL stadium. So that's what she would have to do. Now, if she did that, I would think it was cool as hell. It's mm -hmm. hard for me to say that she should do. Right. It's against her best interests for the most part. part. All right. Well, I trust your recollection of these events, but... I th I think it's fair that we we should need to hear Taylor's version. <laughs> uh, hey, check out oh this! Uh, check out this, Nora. Though for real, uh, <laughs> this has happened. I don't remember it happening this bad in past Taylor Swift tour on sale events. Uh, but I remember that for the Reputation tour, it was crazy. You had to get verified. It was the whole thing. You wait. People were getting kicked out. Not again. I, I didn't hear it as bad as I this mean, that time. happened when I tried to get John Mayer tickets. Yes. It uh, happens with Ticketmaster all the time. But what it is what one happens of the it is unforgivable how bad their platform is. Correct. Be like, that and I, I'm not I'm not saying that I don't think that there are problems with the other steps in the process. If they had a website, let's not forget that these were pre-sales that they had invited people to participate in. They knew exactly how many people had codes and they were staggered for time zones. The on sales were, you know, if you were in, in central time, it happened at 10 a.m. Central. If you're on the West Coast, it happened at 10 a.m. there. They have a staggered queue of a number of people that they knew were going to do this. And the website was completely non-functional for an entire day. Yeah, I mean, Ticketmaster is a criminal enterprise. I, I want to know, though, Nora, am I right in, I have been telling people to not worry about this, and I know it's stressful if you try to get tickets and then you don't get them, or if you think you got them and you lost them or whatever. My experience with past Taylor Swift tours is if you simply wait after this big rush, which it is a crazy, daunting rush, tickets are available. And I don't mean from resellers, but tickets are available from the box office, from Ticketmaster. Months later, I got floor seats, or I got field seats to Taylor Swift at uh, in Atlanta. And in the days leading up to Taylor Swift at Foxborough, there were so many tickets available that when I couldn't go, I ended up just giving tickets away because I was going to get less for, uh, for them than face. Also, I've known from getting tickets to big concerts post-COVID the resale market is not as crazy, and resellers are actually having a worse time turning a huge profit off of these things. So do you think that it will follow those past tours where, yes, it's crazy in the beginning, but ultimately, if you want tickets, you'll probably be able to get them? So uh, yes and no. The yes part is that what you're saying about if you don't get tickets through one of the presales or immediately at the general on sale – 
take a breath. Just hang tight because that's when that's when the scalpers look for suckers. You know, and also that the, the entire but, venues don't sell out. Like again, I got the I got the floor seats so that's not, from Ticketmaster. That that's that is great. And to an extent, like I got I remember when she added a third night in Foxborough for the reputation tour. I bought resale tickets. I bought tickets originally to one night, but I decided I wanted to go to another night. And I bought tickets on the resale market that were pretty cheap. Mm. But they were not face value. It was, but it was like it was not exorbitant. I think I bought a, a like an eighty dollars ticket for maybe one hundred and twenty dollars. Mm. I mean, I think um, the big part you're missing here but too. It was not in a big East Coast city. My recollection was not these things don't sell out. And the difference now there are seventeen more shows for this tour than there were for Reputation. So ah. there is more inventory. Yeah. But with Reputation and bigger tour, name the, openers. And it's right. been so long since she did a tour. Like it's just been so long. Yeah, I and think I think I, the demand is going to be I crazy. Mean, obviously, it, it always is, but even more so now. I've also had a different like my recent experience buying tickets to concerts is that I'm paying above if I like I either go through the the whole verified fan thing. Mm -hmm. Like I felt like I paid a very good price to go to Harry Styles because I did the verified fan thing, and even though that glitched too, like was ultimately able to make it work. Every other show, if I haven't been like really on it initially, I've I've paid more than face value. That th said, I'm pretty tied to my market or to Boston. Did and your, like those are hard places to go to shows. Did your friend who is a doctor go to the Harry Styles concert with you? And if so, did he kidnap her into an alternate uh, simulation? Um, she didn't, but he did play the song Medicine on the night when I saw ah, on, on, there you on go. track that the fans love. Hmm. I do think that it's like really you're movie. coming from a logical standpoint and saying like wait it out. I think the problem there is that a lot of the Taylor Swift fandom is not logical and like a big part of the fandom is constantly a competition to to proving that you're the biggest Taylor Swift fan on earth. And to do that but you have to get tickets don't immediately. Do that. Don't do that. Don't be like, or if, if, if you're doing that, understand that that's why you're doing it and you're going to sacrifice some value to do that. Right. I don't agree with my experience has not been quite as like, I would not feel comfortable saying from my personal experience that if somebody doesn't get tickets immediately, they should just wait it out because they'll probably be able to buy tickets at face value later. I do agree that they should wait it out. Because I think if they have to resort to the secondary market or maybe they get lucky, that stuff is much more likely to happen if they take a breath and wait than if they immediately go for it. Um, You're not going to get gouged as hard. Positive. Exactly. You're not going to – because the people who put the tickets up for $20,000 a pop, they're doing that right off the bat and they're looking for suckers. Right. They're looking, they're for, looking for people who are in panic now. mode. They're looking – right. They're looking for like an oligarch who's got a daughter who's going to throw a – freaking fit if she doesn't yes. get front row tickets and um, that is who they are looking for and I mean, They'll I did have a, I did have a parent uh, trying to get tickets for his daughter. Say, well, what should I do? You, you're you're saying it's uh, going to be okay and that it'll be easier to get tickets later than it is now. I just said lie to your kid and say that you got the tickets. What are they? Are they checking your credit well, card statements? The, I think the problem. I think the problem is like there are probably a lot of uh, parents who are getting the tickets for Christmas. Again, Christmas lie. What are you presenting them with? Food? What are you transferring them? The air dropping them in their mobile wallet? Right, no, but you have to have a physical. Do some craft. You have to a have little, a physical make present. A certificate. Oh, yeah, and that's why you, you you like print out a picture of Taylor Swift or something. I've I've given tickets or whatever, and I've never been like, here are the tickets, because then they'll just take somebody else. When <laughs> I get somebody tickets to something, I'm saying I'm holding them to hostage. This thing. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. It's going to be okay. Uh, Nora, thank you very much. Uh, I am actually the biggest Taylor Swift fan in the world, so uh, I'm glad that uh, we were able to have this conversation. Nora, you're the best. We're going to call you again soon. Thank you for talking us off the ledge. Car is a cat. Oh, <laughs> it is. It is, my friend. Bye-bye now. Bye. All right. How do we... Uh, it's that one. And now she should be gone. Hello? Uh, now we're not going to hear from her... Let me see. Ever again. Did it hang up on my phone? Now, th that'll be the end of uh, anything that we uh, hear from Nora. But uh, I do want to hear from our friends at 
Vizzy because let me tell you, I went to a concert this weekend and met up with some friends before, knew that, uh, Pete, you were one of them. I knew that I'd be watching the Chargers later on and that I'd probably be in a bad mood and maybe uh, it would drive me to drink. Uh, I didn't want that experience to begin the day. I wanted to be around good friends with good vibes and just enjoy what I was doing. So I'll tell you what I did. I just loaded up that cooler with some Vizzies and got in that Uber and had myself a great day. Nothing better than sitting around good company, having yourself one delicious Vizzy. You've heard me say it before, but truly Vizzy has flavors for every vibe, whether for a football game, any sort of cuffing activity, anything in between. Level up those vibes with a case of bold, delicious, Vizzy hard seltzer. I hope I'm not telling tales out of school, but one of my friends said, hey, you want to give me one of those seltzers? I said, yeah, these aren't just for me. I tossed him it takes, one. It takes a big man to give away a Vizzy. Yeah, and it was uh, one of the mimosa flavors. And, I mean, there's so many. There's the pineapple orange. There's peach orange. Really, really good. And uh, it was a tough decision for him to make between the various mimosa flavors, but it was a win-win because I said, you know what? If you don't take that peach orange... Maybe later, if, if, if I haven't had too many, maybe if I want another Vizzy, mm -hmm. that one's got my name on it. You know who wasn't a win-win for? The Chargers. Yeah. Chargers went on to, to lose later Famous. in that night. Hey, uh, if you're new to the Vizzy experience, I would recommend a Variety 2-Pack, which gives you the blueberry lemon as well as the watermelon strawberry raspberry tangerine papaya passion fruits Vizzy hard seltzer flavors for every vibe stock up on Vizzy hard seltzer and show some love for the show here's how to get yours go to vizzyhardseltzer.com slash washed to find Vizzy near you that's vizzyhardseltzer.com slash washed and to hear the first about latest flavor drops and more sign up at vizzyhardseltzer.com slash subscribe must be 21 plus celebrate responsibly Molson Coors Beverage Company Milwaukee Wisconsin and, and, and our other favorite sponsor I'm sorry, Andor, Andor, Andor. is a show that, uh, That's right. that you've been watching, Pete. And yes. You say, Pete tells me this every day. I fucking do. He says every day. I get, I, I, I get a ding dong. I go outside. He says, hey, neighbor. They say, you don't do you here. walk here? And he says, yeah. All right. Sorry, am I interrupting anything? Maybe you watching an episode of Andor? And I said, no, no, what's that? And you say, DJ, it's the show I've been telling you about. You've got to watch it. I... I'm going to cede the floor to you because you're crazy about this. I It's really annoying. This is a personal gripe. I'm not going to watch then if it's really annoying. <laughs> no, it's really annoying that when you tell me to watch something, 100%, you, you will just spam me yeah, with, with... And you'll do it. Like, you will, like, I will do it because you just will not leave me the fuck alone. I get, eh, that's you're not like, true. I no, get it is true. You're I like, watch this high you decker. Alone. Watch this won't high decker. I leave you alone. You <laughs> wish I wouldn't leave you alone. No, watch mean, this high decker I thing. Would. And I'm like, I, I might. Maybe I, maybe I will. You wish I would not leave you alone. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, you're like watch this high decker thing, and I'm like, yeah, yeah maybe. I, said, I don't like high, I don't like high decker as much as you do. And then you're like, okay, I don't like Andor as much as you <laughs> because you don't watch it. Yeah, and so you just spam so my me text alone. messages you with videos of high decker, and then you just talk about it anyway. I've sent two videos of high decker. One of them was and a video that I tweeted. Texts. One of the, in ninety seven texts. You are now. <laughs> Pete is misrepresenting our relationship heavily. I have, have receipts. No, I have no problem being the person that someone comes to with stuff and says, hey, I want to talk to you about this show. Do you want to check out this thing? Do you want to do this thing? I am the person that typically might not respond for a little bit, and I feel bad about that. You are now representing me as oh, the I've little dog I've that's outside. I've stopped responding. Like I've everything high deck related. I just don't if it's high deck related, that's fine. But now you're painting like the you're cooler than me type. No, of no, thing. no, 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 no. And that's not at all. No, no, no. Absolutely not no. the case. No, I'm just. I'm. You can I'm, lie if you want to no, lie. I'm not lying about that. I'm illuminating the difference in our responses to a suggestion, because you suggest something and. You don't. You're being such a little bitch right now. I'm not. I, this is a hundred percent true. If you suggest something to me, y you. And you're like really passionate about it. Yeah. You will not wait for me to decide to watch it. You'll just power forward and continue talking about it. What else are you going to do? You're going to watch Andor all day and then I got to hear yes. about Andor every five minutes? But I don't I'd rather no, talk but I about don't the talk, thing that I like. But I don't talk about Andor. Oh. I, I don't talk about Andor like in detail. I say just watch. I say watch Andor. You oh. got to watch Andor. That's that's. What else have I told you about that's Andor? That's true. Yeah. That's because. All right. You're, yeah. You're not as. 
I'm you're, pushing you're, you're Andor on you. You're not coming at it with as much. Uh, you're not as thoughtful when you push something. You just say, "Hey, it's a show." I'm letting you make your own decision. Well, that's very nice of you. It's and not very nice in- of you when you misrepresent <laughs> that I'm over here woofing you all day. That's not. That's not what I said. Uh, oh I'm not saying God. you're woofing me all day. I just said you that. You wish I would woof you. <laughs> I'm just saying that you pr- you suggest something. If I was doing I, what you were suggesting, let me I'm doing, finish. You would be in fucking heaven. You You'd say, you I suggest so something. DJ today. Oh my god, I'm so happy. You suggest something, and you proceed with the assumption that I have automatically gone ahead and followed your instructions to watch the thing. I suggest something, and then I follow up with the suggestion with another light suggestion, and I I keep pushing it until you're like, okay, I'm starting Andor. Yeah. And then you never do it. <laughs> no, I'm going to start Andor. Okay. I, I, I'm watching other I don't things. I'll believe it when I see it. And it, it's a Star Wars thing. I was just saying, hey, I, I'm going to give you the opportunity to tell us about this show. Why yeah. is it so great? Sell me on it. Instead, <laughs> you just had a your you had a little hissy fit about I did not have a hissy about fit. Tim Heidecker. You had a hissy fit about being defensive about my my oh, illumination. I mean the only that would have been that would have been a thirty second illumination if you had just let me finish. But you know the only thing that truly makes me hit the roof is if somebody accuses me of doing well, something you that I didn't me, do. You wouldn't even let me land the plane. Oh, you well, to tell you what you are flying. Into some dangerous territory, my friend. Well, I'm a good You're enough pilot. Into Liveville. I'm a good enough pilot that I won't fucking crash the plane in Liveville. Take me from A to B. You went from A to fucking I don't even know what. If if you had a, a Bible on your hand, you'd be burning up it, or under your hand. You'd be burning up as you were saying that because you you were getting into so much lying and mischaracterization <laughs> that sure, yeah, eventually you got to land. And tell you what. If you sent me a text message instead of your little like, boop, 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 I'm woofing you, DJ, but you watch it. If you said, hey, listen, you crazy psycho that's always texting me about Tim Heidecker, why don't you watch uh, Andor for once in your life? I would respond, I've texted you like probably, actually, I've probably texted, including the Tim Heidecker stand up special a million years ago. I've texted you a bunch about it, but not, not an inordinate amount of times for friends who recommend things to each other, but. You would have gotten my interest, and I would have said, okay, tell me more about this Andor thing. Oh, I plan on it. Yeah, I'm, tell I, me more about this Andor thing. Andor is a... Fan- Can I believe what you're about to say, or are you going to lie again? I'm not crashing the plane in Liveville. Okay. Uh, Andor is a spectacular show that's essentially like... It, it does not matter that you're not a Star Wars guy. I would not recommend a Star Wars show to you. Have I ever recommended anything Star Wars to you beyond Andor? Yes, and then I didn't watch it right away, and then you had a fucking freak out on my on Beyond my fucking Andor. podcast. About- no, fuck you. <laughs> uh, no, Andor is a show that transcends Star Wars fandom, and it, it sounds so pretentious saying that, but it is a hundred percent true. It's just like a great heist show, and like like insurrection show, I guess, not like a mm. January sixth insurrection show, but like uh, it's just a really good uh, rebel rebels versus the empire show and it doesn't have like a ton of lightsabers doesn't have like ooh, let's talk about jedis for 40 minutes and like that's why a lot of people a lot of star wars people do not like andor oh like there's been some pushback against andor from traditional like oh i'm a dumb dumb star wars i want lightsabers and jedi and they're like it doesn't have that i'm out but it is a fantastic, like, prestige television show. It has an unbelievable cast. Diego Luna, uh, Stellan, Star- Stellan Starsgard, uh, uh, Andy Serkis, mm-hmm. the guy from The Bear, uh, Cousin. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, like, the scumbag cousin. Guy He's from, in it. from um, Girls. No, Adam Driver. He's, He's not in the show Girls. <laughs> no. Uh, it's just, a, it's extremely well acted. I recommended you watch Girls, and you said no. Yeah, because Lena Dunham's in it. That's an easy pass. Girls. I would no. never recommend it. But even if you did, I'd be like, oh, Lena Dunham's in it. Except we did go out before the killer show, and you guys talked about girls for like 45 minutes, and it made me interested in it. What, which parts of girls were we talking about? Why were we talking about it? Uh, I don't know. Oh, because we were talking about Lena, oh, Dunham, pa- Lena Dunham painting herself as a gay icon with nobody's permission. It was that day. Yes. And then I do remember we got into the conversation of like how um, captivating – 
Adam Driver mm-hmm. and magnetic well, that was Adam like his Driver was the first right? time. Yeah. yeah. You watched that show and you were like, who is that man? Does yeah. It, I don't even remember the first time that I saw Adam Driver, but I'm, I guarantee the first time I saw him, I was like, I need to know more about that guy and what he's about. And or have a have an Adam Driver like person or character or performance. Um by the way. Yes, I, sort of. Maybe. You I'm realizing for somebody who brought up the Tim Heidecker thing, you just did the most Tim Heidecker thing in the world, which was uh, in a segment that's supposed to be about well, that, talking about that, a TV well, show, being really fucking mad about like a personal <laughs> thing, and instead well, it just turned into infighting. I, I mean, that's I, the show on cinema. I essentially that I essentially thought that you were doing that on purpose. Oh no, I got it, mad at you. Okay, oh. I thought you were doing oh, that on so purpose. Were, oh. Like I know the uh, like I I was playing that was along. your cute way of yes. saying I watched on cinema. I for didn't you, watch buddy. on cinema, but you've talked about it enough that I know how what it, how it goes. Uh, once again i mean i just don't know if even on that show if they lie (laughs) uh and or it's it's really great it doesn't feel like star wars um because of like its depth its world building not that star wars is like bad at world building but like it sinks a lot of time and energy into doing that and like i feel like a lot of the recent star wars stuff has been very surface level like the mandalorian is a good show but it's a very different show it's essentially like an old uh, cowboy western where it's like uh, self-contained 30 minute episodes wraps up like really n- neatly every time there's like a little like plot every episode and then you're just done in 30 minutes and that's the experience and or is like just slow build and it's like really intense and it has themes that are really deep and like it's a fucking gritty brutal star wars show that you don't see anywhere else. Is it scary and or violent? You're just going to keep doing and or jokes, huh? <laughs> uh, it is violent. It is not scary. Ah. Well, it's scary in like like, uh, like existential dread sort of scary. I mean, I think that you said that there weren't lightsabers in it. No. I wish that they be having some sort of conversation and or altercation um Mm -hmm. confrontation i like the threat of like because you say like it doesn't feel like a star wars show it's not a star wars thing i like the idea of it all being a build-up to like some light little interaction one of the guys walking down the street bumps into another guy and guy's like watch where you're going and he has like a chris maltasanti moment he's like oh he pulls a lightsaber (laughs) on him that would be incredible yeah that that Maybe that's, that where, maybe that's where they're heading. I mean, we're only a, uh, 10 episodes deep because uh, there are 12 episodes in the first season. Episode 10 was the – fuck, I don't know if I want to say this, but I'm going to I'm gonna go for it. Uh, episode 10 was the best episode of TV that I've seen this year, including any of the Better Call Saul episodes. Wow. Did you, uh, did you see The Sopranos yet? We were talking about Chris Maltesanti mm-hmm. earlier. Did like, you ever have watch I seen The Sopranos? The Sopranos? Yeah. yeah. All right, and you like Andor better. What? This is why I don't text him at all. <laughs> I just ask him a fucking question. Do I like he... The Sopranos better than Andor? Yeah. Yeah, but nice. I love The Sopranos. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a good show. I like There's it. a lot of stuff that happens. Oh god, it's so good. Uh I was going to ask if you saw a certain one, but I don't want to spoil anything. So that's uh Andor. And maybe we can check in each week. See if I've watched Andor. Sure, yeah. I think you'll like that. I think that'll be a real treat for uh, old Peter. Hope, hope yeah, we can just fit it into his busy schedule where he's just <laughs> getting uh, bombarded with uh, with all these woofs from uh, everybody. Who, who, who else is really barking up your heels? That 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 phone of yours just fucking melting down from. A, I sent you about three hundred texts during this. That's show. right. Yeah, you were just That's doing you were voice. To, you. You're doing voice to text. Yeah, just talking about Heidecker. And everybody it's knows me. The send. Just relentless. Text, but I, people are going to hear this and get mad at me. They're yeah, be like, you're sending texts all day, you fucking asshole. I didn't say that you were texting me all day. I when you like when you get passionate about Heidecker, you get locked in. That's a topic, and you just fire off like six in a row, I and mean, then you're done. I guess I'm a. You are like I'm a, a, text, a, a I'm a string text like one sentence at a time. Yeah, so yeah, I'll, right. I'll break those up into six texts. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like I'm not. I'm not saying that you're fucking like hounding me all day. Just fucking lying, but like, f- b- lying but like, fucking face I, down on my bed, kicking my feet up, like 
fucking texting Pete. But if I take like a 10 minute break on my, my acupressure mat that I just got and it That's kicks a, my ass every day. I love that thing. And and I check my phone after 10 minutes. There's like eight like, unread text messages from DJ. And it's just like. And they're all Heidecker related. One like. Drinking a soda, watching Heidecker, thinking <laughs> yeah. about yeah, that's a good, that's for sure <laughs> yeah. going to be eight text messages. Okay, uh, you know what you could have said was that at the beginning that's instead what of I was, fucking that, lying. That's what I was getting at, and then you got really defensive. Now I'm wondering what else have you lied about on this podcast? We reviewed thousands of television shows, it's true movies. Sporting All events, in question now. Concerts. We have to crack this thing <laughs> wide the open. The next one and a half years of brunch will just be uh, video reviews of our of our Hashtag, of my takes me. of uh, my yeah. takes. That's and then we will be uh, like pull, there, DJ's going to come into the episode next week with stacks of paperwork. This is going to UPS be UPS truck. UPS trucks full of paperwork and we're going to be sifting through it like it's a fucking deposition and be like, well, on January 8th, you said Two days that you after liked the Chef. Hmm. Oh, shit. That's right. Huh? Like January a, 8th, you, you said, said I disapprove of this I please, insurrection. May I please well, what did have you my mean by that? Yeah. That's what you said on January 8th. You said, can I have my phone call? Because you were, you were probably in jail for all I know. <laughs> Fuck off. Do you think Never it's going been to, to jail. be the scene in it's going to be the scene in Shattered Glass where they have to go out into the hallway and there's the big like uh they have all of the magazine covers and all of the issues and they're pulling them down one by one <laughs> because uh Peter Sar Bill Sarsgaard? Pa- mm, Peter Sarsgaard? No, um Peter Steven Sar- 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 Peter uh who's, who's no, Sarsgaard? Sar- uh Sarsgaard is Michael Sar- uh, no, fuck. Oh, shit. I think it's Peter Sarsgaard. I think it's Peter Sarsgaard. Peter Sarsgaard yes. is it's, like... That always confuses me, yeah, by the way. That's that, That's fair. You're, he's like, wait a second. What else did he like? And he's pulling them all mm-hmm. down. He's going through all of them. And he's like, "This that's a cool <laughs> detail in that story, too. He probably fucking made it up. <laughs> uh, while we're on the topic, we had this conversation. I had I had people over uh, this weekend. I can it confirm was, that Pete uh, did that, yeah, by the way. I'm not so lying. Don't worry. <laughs> This is like uh, Twitter's machi, machi. Twitter's like verification, like fact verification, fact yeah. checking system coming into play. Hey, from now on, if Pete tweets anything, verified claim, tag me and say say this true at DJ Bean. <laughs> it's gonna be even more. Work, oh, but this I guess, true instead you know of this you. Yeah, yeah. And you know what I'll do? I'll I'll have to take off all the time that I usually spend texting Pete all fucking day, and instead I'll verify whether or not he's lying. Hashtag was Pete lying. Uh, I had people over this weekend, verified claim, um, because I I just like realized last week that I can have people over whenever I want to, not a thought that I'd previously crossed my mind. I got that a little earlier in adulthood, but I'm glad that people get there. Yeah, it's it's a weird like, oh shit, like I don't have any, my thought process was like, hey, a lot of stuff going on this weekend, don't have any plans, that's a bummer, wish somebody would ask me to do something. And instead, DJ is just texting me about fucking Heidecker nonstop. Yeah, I mean, his phone's on fire. <laughs> it's like, uh, so I was just like, oh shit, I have a house. I have some friends. Ask him over. So had people over for the games and stuff. And we got into a discussion about Bill Skarsgård mm. randomly. And we kind of came to the conclusion that we're like approaching like the like the the golden age of Bill Skarsgård. The the scars of Sans. The scars of Sans. I like that. But no, but you can't say that because yeah, I you, know he hasn't the really. Bill, no, like the Bill scars of Sans because there are oh, yeah. separate. We've ones. already had the Stella Sans. And uh, what's his, he has a brother, right? Uh, Peter yeah. Sarsgaard. No, Bill Sarsgaard. My, uh, Stellan, Stellan and uh, fuck, what's God. the guy from uh, Big Little Lies? Yeah, Bill. N- Wait, no, Bi- Bill uh, is the younger one. Scar- Bill Skarsgård is the younger one. Stellan is the oldest, and, uh, fuck. Alexander. Alex, yeah, Alexander Skarsgård, yeah. Uh, Bill Skarsgård is entering into the Bill Skarsgård because, um, uh, Barbarian, amazing. Great movie. Uh, the It prequel is coming. Mm -hmm. I believe that, I, I think that he's playing Pennywise, haven't, uh, the, the early Pennywise. I don't think we've verified that, but. Um, it doesn't sound like something you'd do. Right. Uh, and then the third thing, what else does he have coming out? There's another movie that like looks amazing with him in it. Let's see. Let's look up uh, Bill Skarsgård. 
Bill Skarsgård. Because we had the discussion. We were like, oh, this movie's coming out and it looks amazing. He's got quite the lips on him. It's my favorite thing about him. Very good lips. Uh, Burn All My Letters. No. Is... Uh, John Wick 4, of course. John Wick 4, yes, he's in John Wick 4, that's right. John Wick 4, the trailer came out, and he's in John Wick 4. He plays, like a, I believe, a Russian mobster, and like he looks awesome in that. So I think Bill Skarsgård is approaching very hot shit territory. Speaking of hot shit, uh, we went to a uh, Planes concert. We saw the band Planes. Uh, it was a great time, good vibes, had a Vizzy. Nobody talked about Abilene. Everything was the way mm-hmm. that we wanted to go. Uh, they had a great T-shirt. It said... It was the don't mess with Texas shirt, but it said don't mess with planes. And it was a really good shirt. And both of us weren't going to get it. I was really hoping you would want to get it. And uh, you did want to get it. So you got it. And the reason I wanted you to get it is because I think ringer t-shirts look very good on you. So now you got that shirt. And you said uh, we should talk about things that specifically look good Lie. on just one of us. Uh, so lie. What's, this is something, DJ's idea. what's something that you think looks good on Who's me? Who's a liar now? Uh, something that looks good on you. Um, weirdly enough, uh, beanies look really good on you. Beanies look good on me. Beanies really? look good on you, especially with the the, the longerish hair. Okay. Uh, famously, I took an amazing photo of you wearing a beanie. That's a polka dog beanie? This is a polka dog How do you beanie. know about polka dog? Because Charlie McAvoy sent me uh, his new uh, polka dog collab. collab. I know we did a collab yeah. with them. Rocket Fuel. So I got a package from the old Charlie the, Chunky McAvoy. The, the McAvoy uh, camp? Yes. Uh, they sent me some some dog treats and this hat. Which did you is know about nice... polka dog before? I did not. It's a dog bakery? Yeah, it's a, it's in uh, the North End. And also the seaport now. Oh, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. <laughs> I'm a big polka dog guy. Really? Yeah, it's very expensive, but you go in there and, man, you could get some really cool stuff. I know. Like, the dog treats look good enough for me to try. You should go to polka dog one day and just, like, seriously shop around. Poke I, around? I, uh, seriously. I used to go there all the time. I'd go broke. I don't own a dog. <laughs> I would go there and buy things for, for other Emilio. people's dogs. Yeah. yeah. I remember that one Christmas... I spent not a lot of money on a lot of people. And I spent like 200 bucks on Emilio. I think that's a cool thing. We've talked about how cool it is to like get a coffee for somebody else. Yeah. I think it's a very cool thing to get somebody else's dogs a present. Oh, yeah. That's a cool thing. So it's a cool like, hey, uh, n- uh, not only was I thinking about you, I was thinking about your little, your little furry friend. It's weird. It's a cool move. Do you really think I look good in beanies? I can't remember the last time I wore a beanie. Oh, I wore it uh, in the, a picture you took. Yeah, I was, was literally good. making that point. That so I, you were thinking of the good pictures and what I had going on. Yeah, yeah that you look. I, I and like that's not the only time either. I think that like you uh, you can pull off a beanie way better than I can. And like I'm wearing a beanie right now, and I don't know if it's my look, hmm. but um, yeah, I think beanies look good on you. You come closer to pulling off a headband than most people I know. Most Ooh. guys don't look good in a headband. You don't look bad in a headband, okay. which is seriously like, that is a massive win. I mean, the the, the percentage of people of dudes who look good in headbands, like I, for, I don't know why I don't look good in a headband. I should. Got the hair. You'd think it just looks bad, hmm. but you look better in a headband than most. Okay, well, I'm gonna take that. But I haven't worn a headband in forever. Uh, it's only a long hair thing. Well, that probably means that Pete wore a headband five minutes ago <laughs> the way off. he lied uh i do think it's interesting that you say that i look good in ringer tees because i've literally only ever owned one ringer tee in my life and i know exactly why you think it looks good i know exactly what you're thinking of when you say that it looks good i wore a ringer tee to Lollapalooza. what are they like five or six years ago years ago and uh there's a video of me dancing mm-hmm. quite drunk during a St. Lucia performance at Lollapalooza with a fanny pack on after we'd gone to the Cubs game. And it's a Hootie and the Blowfish ringer tee in the style of a Bubblicious logo. Mm. And the story of that shirt is very funny because I bought it in high school, probably as like a sophomore or a junior, when I was like huge into Hootie and the Blowfish. I saw it advertised on Facebook. This is how uh, how much I'm dating myself. I bought it uh, on Facebook and I didn't wear it for probably like four or five years ever because I was a skinny person, like a scrawny high school kid. And I just did not fill out a, the ringer tee and it looks so awkward. And then I started going to the gym 
And when we went to Lollapalooza, I was like thinking of Cubs outfits and that's Cub, Cubs colors. And so I tried on that shirt and I was like, oh, fuck, this like actually fits now. And it looks pretty good now that I'm like in shape. Hmm. So that's the only the only time I've ever worn a ringer T-shirt. I won't ringer T, but I will push a T. Ooh, got it. Uh, I am excited to wear that that show. Maybe next week. Hey, get on the Patreon for our uh, for our video episode next week when if I wear the Plains T-shirt. If we're back next week and. I mean, maybe, if people, this, maybe, if maybe, this rift hasn't canceled the podcast. No, well, I'm just assuming we'll be like, hey, what kind of time will you be recording today? And uh, well, I don't know. How about three o'clock? You'll say, sure. And then you, because you were lying then, <laughs> I'm sitting here by myself. And I'm, not, I'm not doing an episode by myself. Not, not going there. Not, no thank you. The episode of this show is called PDPD Pants on Fire. PD, hashtag was Pete lying. What else was he lying about?